In this video, we're going to look at backing tracks within Ableton Live. Backing tracks are a great way for a solo musician or instrumentalist to be able to play a song in the background and then add their solo instrument or voice on top of it. Now, we're also going to look at using this same technique for sending backing tracks to, let's say, your drummer or musicians in your band as a way of keeping them in time or knowing what's happening in the track. So to start, I just have this sample here, this track called Shimmers in the Dark. This is a re-edit I made the other day. And if I just put that in here, I already re-warped it so we can listen to it. You're going to have to look up how to warp things correctly on your own, but there's tons of information on that on my site as well as on the internet. So this whole part is vocal, so let's skip ahead. Even in the I performed this with Mr. Moo, otherwise known as Milo Hayden, and he did an awesome job with playing violin on top of this. So we're going to come at it from that perspective. If I have this song and I want to be able to play it so that uh, I or someone else can play on top of it. So you could just start it from the beginning and play it through, or you could take this a step further, which is I'm going to just duplicate it. And what I want to do is I want to have this section. I'm going to press loop. That's the intro, and I'm just going to hold it, and move down and duplicate it. And I'm going to have this section, which was kind of the main beat. Then I'm going to have a second section that comes in, and a break, and so on. This way, I'm starting to break up the track into its different parts. This makes it a lot easier in a live performance if I want to. Maybe I want to start it just here. And it can kind of more interact with the crowd speed it up if they need it, and so on. So I can bring in the second. Break, and so on. Now I might want to either rename these. I can say intro, main section, and this is the breakdown, and so on. And that way it's really easy for me to know. I can also rename it here by saying intro, main, and so on. I can even color these in some fashion to tell me that this is the breakdown and this continues on. So that's how I can kind of prepare my track. Now, right now this is being played and it would play over the speakers. And then all I need to do is, let's say I have an instrument, all I can say is input. And if I want it to just go directly in as if it was just guitar pedal that they're coming in having effects and going out, I can set this as monitor in. And then I'm going to rename this violin, for instance. Or this could be vocal. And if it's vocal, set to in. All I have to do is make sure that my sound card is set up correct, and then I can pick what, whatever input that vocal is. So if right, right now, now it's, it's on one. So now it's on one, I can also come in, and I'm going to add in like a reverb. So now I have a wet reverb, and I can dial that in. And this is the great thing about setting this up, because now, let me just turn that off. So now I have my audio going through, and then I can do my vocals, violin, whatever my instrument is. I can set it up here, and I can set up all my effects, and I'm pretty much good to go. And all I have to do is put in my next track, create my set list, and call it good. Well, there might be an instance where you want to send a different click track to either yourself or the musicians you have involved. So to do that, let's just insert another audio track. I'm going to rename this Click. And then on here, I'm not going to mess with that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to, let's say, an external out. Now, right now, I can send this to 3 and 4, 1 and 4, whatever. You could have multiple sends depending on your sound card. Um, but 3 and 4 is where my cue mix would be. But that's another way you can do this is you can come in here and go to my queue is set to let's set it to three and four 
and now I can set this to Q by just clicking that and then this will only be sent to my headphones. So now if I do something like what I like to do is put in an instrument just looking up click and I'm setting this up as a MIDI and then I'm going to send this to there. You want to turn down your volume all the way because now you're just going to hear on the headphones, not over the main speakers. So now if I come in here, let me just hear that real quick. And I'm going to just change this a little bit. Great. So now that's just a click. And what I can do is I can come in here and one, two, three, four, actually more like this. So I have this turned up so you can hear it, but normally I would have this just sent to my headphones. So you can see this will keep a drummer in time if they're playing long or help you know what's happening in the timing. And then I have my vocal being processed here, so I'm pretty much good to go to make a very simple set using backing tracks.